and welcome to Cop on Tay, a series of lunchtime conversations hosted by myself, Maeve Stone, for the Green Arts Department at Access Ballymun. Where are you based, Abby? Well, I'm based in Dublin, but at the moment I'm in Nigeria, so that's nice. <laughs> yeah, sitting outside, so definitely <laughs> not. Thinking. It looked a bit sunny for Dublin. <laughs> And if you can see our grainy, let me show you the grey. <laughs> There's the grey rain uh, at our window. Yeah. <laughs> mm, 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 yeah. So I'm here for two weeks before I'm back to enjoy winter. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well. Yes. So I'm in County Clare. Um, okay. But down in Scarf. So I work in Irish Seed Savers um, for mm. a conservation organisation. So we hold, we're the big, we're the the, the leading NGO saving Ireland's genetic food crop resources. Um, we work with wow. Department of Agriculture. So you'd hear a lot about sort of, the, it was a lot on the news recently about seed arcs. So we would hold mm. a seed bank here. Um, and we also have a national collection of heritage. Arcs. So that's kind of it. Oh, but, fantastic. Yeah. Once I just saw the Irish seed savers, I was like, that must be so fascinating. As in, you know, just that idea of seed rewilding, growing nature, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm a visual artist, um, I should say multidisciplinary. So over the years, I've seen myself um, sculpture, painting, drawing, but also in other creative um, fields like fashion, but that's really the construction side, textiles, embroidery, um, pattern cutting, and also architecture. Um, so that's my background, and I suppose the link to climate, um, the climate, which for me actually is just being a citizen of the earth, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I would say that's where my interest comes in, like I live on the earth, and over the years as the conversations have been more and very, just reading really interesting writing and meeting very interesting people. I just find myself more and more in this conversation, um, not only as an everyday citizen, but also as an artist and just wanting to find out more and really know how I can be, you know, um, in this question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I'm assuming here that you're not just on holiday in Nigeria that you have connection with there. I'm just wondering, do you see a difference moving between the places and how climate is hitting, say in Nigeria versus in, in Ireland? Yeah, it's quite interesting um, in the sense of, for me, I really think the question and why I'm so interested in this also has to do with being of African diaspora. So as a child, when I was nine, um, which is over 30 years ago, I moved to Ireland. Um, and I basically, um, Nigeria would be home country, you know, both mm -hmm. of my parents are from here. Mm -hmm. And so I moved to Ireland when I was nine, and basically, it's almost 25 years since I had a connection with my um, Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, it's, you're um, back now. It just went, it went off for a while. Our, our internet here isn't great. So. No, same here. Here, I'm in... A, I'm in the outskirts, which is interesting, mm -hmm. um, rather than cities. So it's interesting seeing nature. But I was just saying that I haven't been in Nigeria for almost 30 years. And mm -hmm. so coming back okay. from being a young child to being an adult, okay. adult, that's yeah. quite interesting. Yeah. Um, like what I would remember to what I'm experiencing now, um, mm -hmm. because it's changed, as in definitely. Um, I'm looking for some figures in terms of something like forestry in Nigeria, like in the last 20 years, forest mm -hmm. cover has decreased by something like 60%. Mm -hmm. um, so visually, it looks very different. Um, yeah. And I find the conversation on climate, it's interesting because it's, um, I suppose as everyone has heard, the global north versus the global mm -hmm. south mm -hmm. and the attitude um, to climate. Um, mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm hearing and seeing how people mm -hmm. are relating to it. Mm -hmm. And because I suppose here people could do a blame game of we're not responsible, but actually we all are in terms mm -hmm. of um, even something as simple as agriculture, clearing mm -hmm. all the lands for agriculture and all this mm -hmm. use with no idea of the balance. 
mm-hmm. um, with our environmental nature. So yeah, so those are some of the things I'm finding as I'm here, because I am interested to see what the situation is here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, as well. And I'm just thinking mm-hmm. about it when you're talking there. Um, years ago, before climate was really big on the sort of the sort of mainstream agenda, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the man who was murdered, but there were there were battles with oil companies. Yeah, sorry, we will. Um, yeah. So that's obviously something that was very much, um, I suppose that that it, it as with the Amazon maybe and some of the indigenous people there that they were really. Mm up against the hard edge of the fossil fuel industry and sort of these, you know, the big sort of core, the industrial agricultural industries as well. And it's it looks very different there than than it is here. I mean, we don't have people being, you know, the, 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 the say murdered the way they would you hear about indigenous people in the Amazon, you know, who stand up mm. for their rights and stuff like that. So I suppose I would have, ha- I would have a sense, I was reading, I haven't read the rewilding one carefully. I've just gone from meeting to meeting today. I was reading okay. the Greta Thunberg um, paper, and um, I suppose I was thinking about it, like where does it resonate resonate with me? And I just, I think I have a sense that you know about climate. She raises a question, you know, should it be individual or should it be systemic change? Mm-hmm. But my my own personal take on it is that we we need political systems that are fit for purpose and that they need to be global political systems Mm. that our lifestyle in the west is is predicated on exploitation in um the global south and um and our food you know coming from those places and we're very distant from that hard that cutting edge of where um like those kind of battles are taking place as well and the same with climate. I'm just noticing that it's only it seems to be when, when it hits in in the global north. It's when it hits us when we start to take it seriously. But we've been told about it for years and years. And years. So, I it it troubles me that there's a sort of whatever systems we're part of, we've been encouraged to sort of of, um. It, it, it's really around individualism and I'm all right and and not mm. that stuff. It, it's not just about you know people in my country or people in my town but it's a, a, like you said you're you know from your remember the language you use but like citizen of the earth and you know as are we all and we should all it has I just feel that there has to be that consciousness that mm. it shouldn't have to affect me before I care about what's going on and I think as well, I worked for um, a while actually in the Middle East and I would be very critical of the of international development and aid um, because I think it sort of accepts, it accepts that the, the model of aid, there's a lot of what I saw was like people, I met people, I was in Gaza, that they'd been in Iraq and then they'd go to Afghanistan doing, you know, doing aid work and it's almost like, the aid industry goes around and mops up after these sort of political interventions mm. and wars and stuff like that. Um, and the model is about it, it's not about it's not respectful. It's about it's it's still a charity model, no matter what's said. It's about us mm-hmm. rich nations giving to the unfortunate nations. And it's just like so I, I, I really feel that for change we need to get to change our thinking. And but also get to the crux of the political systems, and and I personally, I would hold capitalism responsible for you know, ca- capitalism and colonialism, you know, Absolutely. which go hand in hand. Yeah. So that, anyway, that's a big blah blah blah. <laughs> no, no, no. Because actually, I was also thinking of, along the same lines. I um just that idea of I think we really need to deeply everyone everywhere talk about what it means to be an individual you know Mm -hmm. philosophically but also personally because you know this individualism actually is a bubbleism you know like for many of us it's Mm -hmm. living in a bubble but the fact Mm -hmm. is that that isn't what it means to be a human being because a human being isn't in a bubble you know we're reliant 
on other human beings for food or other places or, you know, so this whole idea of what it is truly an individual, you know, and for me, as I was, especially with um, Greta's article, just that whole idea of like the fundamentals really need to be discussed, you know, because it seems like we're talking about phrases, you know, these scientific phrases, which has its place, but really the crux is our humanity. What do we think is an acceptable behavior for a human being on earth towards another human being? From somebody with more money to somebody with less money, how do we think, you know, we have authority over people? Is it by, you know, and these conversations need to be had because I do agree with you in that the basis is that system of colonialism, which is the same as consumerism. And until we challenge that, we'll just have the same. Um, I found it interesting when she was talking about, you know, how can this BP company at the same time be a champion of climate change? And I find that that's the scenario we're in, whereas the people putting forward the agenda are the ones who are causing it, who caused it and clearly have no interest to solve it or to look mm -hmm. at it deeply. And so that's what I was also, also thinking, because I was like, this is something where anytime it comes up, we feel fear. We feel, you know, very deep emotions. And yet we don't talk enough about our emotional, I mean, maybe emotion isn't the right word, but our human selves, you know, that um, really we're not very humane to each other on many different levels. Um, and we need to ask ourselves, how has it gotten to this? And why do we accept? you know, these different ways, like why do we have that need to exploit, whether mm -hmm. it's other human beings mm -hmm. or, you know, systems, like why is that the dominant way it's about to say, can you hear the rain? Sorry. No. <laughs> okay, a tropical rain is about to start, which is nice. like always very loud. <laughs> I was saying it's interesting, like Irish rain is soft and uh, but here you get the thunder the lightning you know oh, wow. it's like a dramatic <laughs> a dramatic um affair but yeah so that's just where I was thinking in terms of individuals and systems and why does it seem everywhere we can only relate by exploiting dominating the winner takes it all and we have problems with side by side working together building on so that was um yeah yeah, those yeah. are the questions I was thinking. Yeah, I, I, everything you're saying, I just would nod along with that. And I'd, I think I'd add as well, you know, when you talk about our humanity, um, I, I moved to the, for the job I'm in at the moment, I moved from Wicklow down to Clare and uh, my house, I'm surrounded by cows. Um, they graze in the field oh. behind me and they're in the field in front of me and I go out of my front door and they all come to the hedge to look at me and they're... And I see them going up and down every day to be milked. Um, and it really has me thinking about our treatment of animals as well. So in terms of our humanity, it's it's like, um, and, and also in the organization here I'm working, we, we, we work with the earth, we work with trees, we work with nature. And like you said, all that exploitation is extended beyond our treatment of other human beings, but to, to the earth as well, as if it's just here to give us what we want which is, mm. and the irony is what we seem to be thinking we want, which I think is informed by consumerism and all that stuff is, is actually destroying us, but we're, we're destroying this beautiful place we live on. And, you know, for example, um, you know, I know that, that the, we talk about veganism and, you know, as being one of the ways to move. And I know there's a lot of debate around that, but I definitely think that, you know, we have to look at how we treat animals okay um factory farming whether mm. you're a vegan or not if you eat meat I, I you know that's i've no problem with that but just factory farming there's to to keep animals in the way that we keep them um must kill we must be killing a part of our own soul to treat another creature in that way with such cruelty and such heartlessness when you see animals you know in their family groupings and how they behave in the wild mm -hmm. you know to keep pigs penned up in these factory farms it's just I just feel we've lost our humanity there as well so that 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 
the rethinking everything isn't just in terms of our humanity and the individualism what it means isn't just in relation to one another but it's to Mm. all beings and to the place we're living in as well and also this you know this um I was brought up as a a Catholic and so the sort of the the Bible stuff where they say you know and man shall have dominion it's basically you know God created the world in seven days and man shall have dominion and this idea Mm. that we can do as we like it's our playground and we can do as we like is is fundamentally Mm. wrong no I completely I completely agree because I think you know, when, for me, all of this, in terms of looking of, at our humanity, because I believe that if you're really, if you're really humane, you can't treat other beings on the earth. You can't treat, you know, other things on the earth, if you like, if you don't consider trees or, you know, like living. And um, so I really think how we are is a big question on, are we truly human? You know, we like to say we are, or we take one or two things. But if we were truly humane or human, I would like to be seen with them. Um, as you were mentioning, in terms of animals, which for many of us are sustenance, we wouldn't treat them like that, you know, or where we live. As you said, the things we want, we think we want are um, actually what are destroying us and destroying the planet because I think that's one thing I'm thinking more and more about that we're not the only ones on earth you know as in we we simply aren't there's so many other beings you know air water earth but we are like we for me personally it rarely crosses my consciousness (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. um that I'm not the as human beings we're not the only ones who own this earth Um, and Yeah, but I found it interesting that biblical re- reference, you know, um, in terms of dominion, because it's, again, it gives, um, I think, what you were saying earlier about what is leadership, you know, in terms of politics, like what is our idea of leadership? Because how about you have a leadership that is about building up rather than oppressing and exploiting um, for a very limited um good if you want but even those mm. people who think they're benefiting aren't mm. they aren't or um, in a very limited mm. way so also that idea of what does it mean to be a leader um what does it mean to be let's say a leading species if that's what we want to call ourselves on earth you know mm. and again why do we associate that with exploiting and oppression rather than building up um, and I read a very interesting article. Um, oh, yes, um, it was um, by a Native American. And um, she was just talking about some systems that they had in place for enhancing nature, you know. So, for example, situating at a certain point of a river um, so that, I mean, the way she was describing it, so that the way it floods and by creating or clearing this area, it didn't only benefit for crops, but also the animals and encourage buffalo um, in particular to come closer and closer. So she just described four systems that they had, which even though, okay, benefited humans, you know, but it also benefited other creatures um, in terms of, you know, giving them what they needed or what their populations needed to thrive. So I just found that interesting, you know, whereas where if you're talking about leading, um, it doesn't have to be exploitative and it can quite certainly be beneficial for others, not only human beings, but species. Mm. I'm sounding, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's because the vein is sounding so loud. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's, that's just um, what I wanted to add. I mean, especially in terms of thinking political systems and leadership, that they can really, like, we really can be very creative in those days. We don't have to assume, you know, certain things, even if it's happened for generations and in different forms, whether it's the church or government or even scientists, you know, um, mm-hmm. wanting to take the sole position of authority. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. We need, it's like um, incremental change isn't going to do it. We really need a change of consciousness and we need 
a paradigm shift and we need courageous people who aren't afraid to step out and and do things differently and be sort of branded as you know our, our society i think is is always about conforming is like you're expected to conform in different ways you know i mean i remember like at school the conversation used to be did you watch this on the television and did you watch that on the television it's like what about you don't have a television or what about you know all these kind of things and it how that what that does then it makes you different or sets you aside uh, and so there's this pull always to try and conform and whether it's with the latest iPhone or the latest this, the latest that. And it's just like, at some point, I think we just have to redefine um, for ourselves, maybe. And I think Gre uh, Greta talks about that. Just to, it's a bit like having the courage to, you know, to stand for, you know, to, to take action yourself, really, irrespective of others. But then... Um, I do think there's a truth that that we can all be played by. It's like, oh yeah, recycle your bottles or buy this green stuff and it'll all be okay. It pushes, that's how the system pushes the responsibility to the individual. And then it's a bit like you feel guilty because, you know, it's not really working. And actually we need to push it back up to the system and just say, what are you doing? What are you, you know, one of the things that really struck me in Ireland with this, the whole thing in the new, the Ukraine. So all oh. the advertising and the electricity bills are out, you know, air, air, electric, electricity and air, this and air, that, and but how we're generating all this electricity and it's all green and it's clean and it's that. And suddenly we've a war in Ukraine. It's like, whoop, you know, you, we have a shortage of electricity. Um, and your price is going to go way up. It's like, oh, where did all that green electricity you've been generating go? So you realize, yeah, it didn't exist, you know. It's just uh, it's just greenwashing, really, you know. And it's green capitalism, I suppose, is how I would see it. So I think we need to push it back to them and put the hard questions to them as well and insist on the changes that we need. No, absolutely. I think that greenwashing is um is something that needs to be carefully looked at, you know, because I do think also as a consumer, um, because of fear, you also are very willing to be pacified, you know, or you're very willing to be consistent. Um, so mm -hmm. I think um fear and trauma, these sort of um things also need to be dealt with, like how does the individual, or also as society, but really the individual, how do we face that fear, you know, that mm -hmm. ultimately encourage or makes us want to bury our hands in the sand and make mm -hmm. it easy for us um, to be viewed. So I think what you said mm -hmm. about courage is so important. Mm -hmm. um, and I would add like dealing with trauma, dealing with fear, dealing with, um, those are things I think that also need to be, um, yeah, put forward quite strongly and um, tools for us to be able to be courageous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where next? Like what? It's, yeah. it's very easy to get so stuck, isn't it? And just feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. by by everything, you know? Um, I mean, I'm, for myself, I'm, I'm asking myself really where next. So I think I flip between t two total pos different positions and one time, sometimes it's just like, I'll do the little bit I can do. There's probably three positions. Sometimes sometimes I can't do anything. Sometimes I can do a little bit in my own life. And then another time, it's, I'm um, sorry about the phone ringing there. I can't turn it off, I don't think. Yes. Oh, dear. Learned a new skill just now, muting the phone. <laughs> Um, and then sometimes it's tackling things on the big political level, you know, but um, it's very hard to stay out of feeling despair and overwhelm when you start looking at the size of the problem. Like for us here, so I know we're finishing now, um, but like we're seeing, we're seeing plants that aren't getting pollinated. We're seeing our last year, usually we dig up the bare root trees to send out in December. They still had their leaves on in January. They hadn't gone dormant 
trees are like babies. They need their sleep, do you know? They need their dormant season. So while they're still alive, you just wonder how are they going to be in five years' time with this? You know, it's just, I don't know. So it, it, it's scary, I think, really. Yeah, okay. I really think it's just that hope or that idea of holding on to hope and just keep going. Um, but the idea of time definitely is something, um, especially from the Greta article, that idea of time because it's an urgent situation. But at the same time, in urgent situations, and that's when it's most important to be calm and not rush ahead because we don't have time to make mistakes so we don't have time so it's just that paradox of it's urgent but we also need to be super calm super focused um and we can't we can't afford to just um act out of despair but i think hope definitely is my only solution now personally in dealing with things because i do get exactly like what you were describing all those different positions and it paralyzes me often. Like I really literally feel paralyzed and see, I, just, I, I just don't know what to do and think. So hope is what I'm more and more just holding on to. Um, but an active hope, not just hope as in um, um, positive toxicity, I say, yeah, I'm just saying I'm hopeful, but I'm mm -hmm. still looking at things. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's, that's where I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, it's really lovely to meet you online. Yeah, when you're back in Dublin, if you ever feel like coming down to visit, I'd love to. I would you. love to. I mm -hmm. would love to. Yeah. That would be a fantastic. Yes, yeah. yes. I really we would. Do. Um, yeah. I... We do yeah. collaborations with artists as well. And um, there's a woman at the moment, Rachel Doolan, that we're working with. But there's lots of scope around, mm -hmm. you know, different things. But if you ever, but yeah, come down and visit. Um, I would uh, love to come down yeah, and say, yeah, like, yeah. Just, for me, that's part of my project also as a human being, just learning more about nature, because I'm a city yeah. girl, so even yeah. things like seeds, fruits, those are things I have to learn, you know, as an adult, because I didn't know, you know, a lot of these things, so, um, yes, I will certainly be taking you off on that offer. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much.